Hi everyone, Connor McDonald here. It's just too nice a day to be working inside, so I thought I'd do the next Ask Tom TV episode out here in the park, just in the beautiful sunshine, beautiful breeze, but we'll still do some technical stuff. We had a question come in about the in-database archiving feature, so as well as an explanatory uh, session we'll be doing, we'll be seeing a, a 12C feature as well. So let's have a look at row archival and uh, see what the implications are about how it impacts the optimizer. So, uh, as you can see, we are running on version 12 here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a table called T with a couple of columns, and we'll use the row archival clause. Now, for those that aren't familiar with that, what that means is we can now set a flag on each row saying we, whether we think that row has been archived, i.e. shouldn't be visible anymore to normal applications. So, let's insert some rows into that. So we put 10 rows in and we'll gather table stats on it as well. Now, if we query the table, you can see, as you expect, there's 10 rows in there, that makes sense. Now let's have a look at our stats as well, select num rows. And as you can see, the optimizer also thinks there's 10 rows in the table. The question is now is, what if I was to archive some of those rows off? Will that affect the amount of stats or the kind of statistics that we collect? Let's now do that. So first thing I'll do is I'll update table T and I'll set the aura archive state. Now that's a hidden column underneath the table that determines whether a row has been archived or not. And we'll set that to DBMS ILM archive state name. One, which basically means it's been archived for all the rows that are X less than or equal to five. Now let's regather stats again. So the question is, does it change the number of rows that the, the optimizer thinks the table has? Let's do select num rows. And as you can see, the optimizer still thinks there is actually 10 rows. So is that gonna be a problem? Because what if I was to actually query that table? I only see five rows, so will the optimizer get it right? Well, let's turn on auto trace and see what we find out. So let's set auto trace on, trace only explain. Select star from T, and as you can see, because we archived off five rows, we only get five rows there, but the optimizer got it right. It also thinks there's only gonna be five rows. That's because it can, as you can see, it just applies, applies a filter predicate to actually determine which rows are going to be archived off or not. And let's now, turn on row archival visibility to all of them so we can see the archived rows as well. Alter session, set row archival. Now we rerun our select star from T table, and as you can see, the optimizer got it right again. So out of the box, the optimizer understands row archival quite well for those nice, simple select statements. Where things get more interesting is what happens if we start applying more complicated predicates or additional predicates. So I'll turn my archival back to active, which is the default, which simply says, if a row has been archived, don't show it. Now let's look at select star from T, where X is greater than or equal to five. Now, that should return five rows because we're just picking up all the rows that haven't been archived yet. But the optimizer thinks we're only gonna get three because it doesn't understand there's a connectivity here between the aura archive state hidden column and our column called X. It simply multiplied the effectively densities to come up with a reduced number of rows, in this case three. So that's a problem. But what we can do with in database archiving is we can actually use that hidden column aura archive state as a partitioning column to actually physically move the rows into the archive segment as we go. Let's look at that an example. So I'll turn off auto trace, and now let's create a table called T1, same columns as before. It's row archival. This time I'll partition by list on that aura archive state. So partition P1 will have values of one, and partition P2 will have values of zero, the two values that the archive state can have. And we have to do enable row movement because we might want those rows to move from archived to non-archived. We'll insert into T1 
the same 10 rows, so row num, row num from Jewel. And now we'll gather table stats again on our table called T1 now. And if we do select num rows from the user tables where table equals T1, we can see the same thing, 10 rows. The optimizer expects all the rows to be in the table. So let's now update T1, set the ORA archive state once again to basically being archived rows. So DVMS ILM. Once again, for x less than or equal to 5, half the table. And we'll commit those rows and let's gather table stats again. Now we'll set auto trace trace only back on again and we do a select star from T1 and as you can see the optimizer has no problems with this. Right? It's actually using uh, partition elimination now which is cool. And let's now try our statement that causes some problems before. So let's do select star from T1 where x is greater than or equal to 5. Remember last time that returned us an estimate of 3 which was incorrect. It should have returned 5. As you can see this time the optimizer got it right simply because it could use partition elimination rather than just multiplying predicates together to come up with just the rows that aren't archived. So there you have it, in database archiving and the optimizer in 12C. If you're looking at doing that and you've got some complicated queries, you might want to consider partitioning on those archived rows, which makes a lot of sense anyway, because you probably want to compress or do something with archived rows, which not, might not be the same as the normal rows in your active table. Hope you enjoyed this session. I'm going to stay out here in the, in the sun and do some more work on Ask Tom. I'll see you for the next episode of Ask Tom TV. See ya.